Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part 11 of the Desolation of Abomination series. This time we actually are going to do Daniel 12. So let's get started. Verse 1. Uh, King James Bible, please. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince. Now remember, in the previous studies we did, we showed that Michael is an archangel. Michael fought against Satan and his angels. And that was Michael and his angels fighting against Satan and his angels. Contrast that with Revelation chapter 12 which I feel is one of the most important chapters in all the Bible. And it says, At that time shall Michael stand up, standing up for his people, right? Standing up to the bullies. That the great prince, prince which standeth for the children of thy people. There, and we're talking about Israel here, right? And there shall be a time of trouble. Oh, yeah. And we mentioned it before, but I'll mention it again. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 5. For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? Alas! For that day is great. That doesn't mean it's a great day of goodness. No, it's a great day of evil. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. All right, let's... Uh, Oh, I was going to go somewhere else, but let's, let's, well, let's go somewhere else. Let's read Matthew chapter 24, and we'll go back to Daniel chapter 12. Matthew 24, because this ties right into Daniel. Matter of fact, if you don't know what Daniel says, Matthew 24, you'd only have a partial understanding of it. Matthew 24. Very important chapter in the Bible for the end times. Verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Hey, look, Master, look at all these great buildings here. Verse 2. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now, if the wailing wall is part of the temple, then Jesus is a liar. And I think that's why they, uh, the Antichrist, the tribe in the Middle East, gathers around it to try to show the world that Jesus was a liar. But I say not. And I did a, an entire Bible study on this. So if you're interested, let me know, do a search, or I'll tell you where it's at. Nope. Well, you know, people, the reason why they threw the stones down was because the uh, there was somebody set a fire. Some people theorize it was the Roman soldiers themselves that set the fire in the temple because the temple was full of gold. And there was rioting and chaos and pandemonium. So after the large fire, all the gold melted into the cracks in between the stones. So they tore the temple apart stone by stone, scraping all the gold off from the rocks of what the temple was made for. Therefore, the prophecy that Jesus made here came true in 70 A.D., there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. 
And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? The disciples say, hey, uh, what are the signs coming, you know, leading up to when you're going to return and the, end of, and the end of this world? Come on, tell us. That's the Bob translation. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. That's right. Read the word of the Lord. Don't trust man or woman. Verse 5, For many, many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. And boy, I'll tell you what, since the United Nations has been created in, uh, I think it was 46, that's all we've had on this earth. United Nations was supposed to bring peace on earth. And all we've had is wars, 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 and rumors of wars, of which many young whites died in these wars. Like in Korea, General Douglas MacArthur said, you know what? The Chinese are attacking American soldiers in Korea. We should nuke them like we did Japan. I mean, how dare they attack the American army? And what did uh, President Truman do? He uh, dismissed MacArthur. Actually, we should have uh, hung Truman as a traitor and made MacArthur as president, but uh, that's not how things worked, sadly. Now, now, China, we've given them all our technology, and they have an army unrivaled in the world in sheer numbers. And from what I understand, they're rapidly catching up with the Navy. Uh, matter of fact, I've heard they have more submarines than the United States Navy does. Of course, some say they're of inferior quality, but hey, if you could afford to lose two subs for two for one, um, does quality matter? I don't know. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be four things. I'm sorry, three things. There shall be famines. What does that tell you? It tells you you better put something away for a rainy day, people. There shall be famines and pestilences, disease. Uh, you know, there are some things that you can use against diseases. Uh, colloidal silver, people use that for years. It's excellent. That's why they made uh, silverware forks, because bacteria couldn't grow on them. The silver kills bacteria, bad bacteria. Um, you know, there's... That's what they used before antibiotics. Antibiotics were cheap compared to using colloidal silver. Colloidal silver doesn't go bad, uh, bad, never spoils, and you cannot, uh, the bacteria cannot become resistant to it, unlike the uh, antibiotics. And don't take my word for it. It's been well written up in the medical journals. Of course, you won't find it on the internet. You'll have to go to a library with old medical stuff. And, um, you know, I'm not a doctor, praise the Lord, that takes an oath to Apollo in the hypocrite oath. And I'm not giving you medical advice. I'm just telling you what was done back in the old days and what was in the medical journals. So there's going to be famines, pestilences, disease, and earthquakes in diverse or many places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Oh yeah, this is just the introduction, people. 
Then shall they, who's they? The tribe and their lackeys. Uh, matter of fact, your, your, church, your church people, that's going to be, that's who they are. Because they're going to end up denying Christ. Trust me. I know. I mean, after all, they already worship the tribe in the Middle East. And they're a little wailing wall. And they're little beanie caps. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. People, this is one of the most important prophecy chapters in the Bible. And people are so ignorant. They don't even bother. Why bother reading the Bible? It doesn't make any sense. That's what they tell you. And shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. If you want to see them, turn on TBN or the 700 Club. And because iniquity or sin shall abound, you know, the LBQT or whatever it is. Uh, and because an iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. You know, that verse right there, uh, if you ask me, kills once saved, always saved, and eternal security. Christ said, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now, let's face it. If you're starting a race and you quit in the middle, how can you, you never finish the race, you don't get the prize, right? Or, you know, like the Boston Marathon. Uh, I don't know. I'm just telling you what Jesus said. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, isn't that what this whole series is about? When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, what's the holy place? The temple, right? Whoso readeth, let him understand. People, when you see the, the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place, Christ tells you what to do. Verse 16. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. People, I honestly think that as soon as the abomination of desolation takes place, Christ is telling his church, flee to the mountains. Don't go back home. Because they're going to be waiting for you there. Christians are going to be captured and beheaded. It was all foretold by Christ. Listen to him, people. Don't listen to me. Unless I'm leading you to him. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Might be a wise idea to have a place to go. That virtually nobody knows about. Right? That has, it's, you know, clothes and stuff and things that you'll need. Verse 19. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Woe to the women that are going to be breastfeeding children in those days. Verse 20. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, great tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble, people. 
For then shall be great tribulation, trouble, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. This is going to be the worst persecution of Christians in the history of the world. Verse 22, And except those days should be shortened, unless Christ returns in glory, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Who's the elect? I say Christians. Churches say that the Antichrists are the elect. I don't believe that. But hey, if they want to believe the Antichrists are God's chosen elect, uh, may their God bless them. Verse 23. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. All right, so Jesus is talking about false Christs and fall uh, and shall show that shall uh, false Christ and false prophets that are going to show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall sh deceive the very elect. Paul writes about this very thing in Second Thessalonians, chapter two. We've read this. I I've read this chapter. I I, sh I should know it by heart, but I don't. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Now this is the thing, people. If you're not caught up into the air to be with Christ, it's the false Messiah. Verse 2. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you. Let no man deceive you. That's what Christ was warning about, right? Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The second coming. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And people, I already covered why this did not happen in 70 A.D., so it has to be the future, this event, not necessarily this epistle of Paul. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know that withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Now I believe that's... Michael is the restrainer. And then shall that wicked be revealed. See, Michael, I believe, is going to be told, stand aside, let these things happen. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power, with all power and signs and lying wonders. False miracles, people. Verse 10. And with all deceivableness and unri of unrighteousness and them that perish, 
because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. What's a delusion? Believing something that's not true. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a, a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning, because God hath from the beginning chosen, chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Wherefore he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, we were chosen from the beginning, people. We, the believers, are God's elect, my opinion. All right, in chapter 19 of Revelation, verse 20. And the beast, the beast. See, I think the beast, the, the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, are all the same entity. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. See, the false prophet's going to perform miracles before the beast. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Oh, yeah. That's the name of that tune. All right, let's uh, tie this into Revelation chapter 13. I guess we're going to have to read the whole chapter. And I, verse 1, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his heads... Uh, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him. All right. And there was given unto him. Uh, oh, let's see. Hold on. I'm sorry. I lost my place. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. See, that's about the time the great tribulation is going to be. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. See, people, it's, there's going to be war against the Christians. And many of them are going to be overcome and killed. That's why Christ said to, to um, endure unto the end. Many are going to lose their heads, literally, in guillotines. Verse 8, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have a, an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith 
of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, false miracles, people. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire, fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. This is what Elijah did back in uh, the book of Kings when he confronted the prophets of Baal, B-A-A-L. He brought fire down from the heaven. And many people are going to think this false prophet is Elijah because he's going to mimic his miracles. So that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the sight uh, on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. False miracles, people. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Television? That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Six, six, six. Back to Matthew 24. Verse 24. Matthew 24, 24. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect, Behold, I have told you before. Oh yeah, I warned you. Right? Verse 26. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he, the Messiah, the Christ, behold, he is in the desert. Go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. We mentioned that in another previous study on this series, the stars falling from heaven. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. All right, let's go back to Daniel chapter 12. I may as well start from the beginning. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time, and at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep, and we're talking about dust, you know, dead people, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Here's the resurrection, people. Some to everlasting life, and some to shame 
and everlasting contempt. There's a uh, small group of people around that believe what's called the doctrine of ultimate reconciliation. They think that uh, everybody's going to go through a period of cleansing and eventually they'll all be reconciled back to God, even Satan, and Satan will take his rightful place with God around his throne in heaven. Uh, I guess they just don't read the Bible, I guess, because this says some are going to wake up to shame and everlasting contempt. You know what contempt is? means you despise and hate something and it's everlasting that doesn't mean a period of time so and they that shall uh, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that do uh, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever but thou O Daniel shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Even to the time of the end. See, Daniel's prophecies are going to make sense at the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be in increased. Now, I don't know if this is going to be talking strictly about godly knowledge, or, you know, people... In the Old Testament, even the prophets didn't know about the coming of Christ. And all this stuff about the end times, uh, you know, there's a, it makes, I don't know, it kind of makes a lot of sense, at least to me. I mean, I'm not an expert, but uh, there are certain events that are going to happen, right? And it says, knowledge shall be increased. Well, look at it. In the last, oh, since, um, uh, in the last couple hundred years, what kind of knowledge has increased? I mean, we've got trains, planes, automobiles, rockets, uh, you know, for thousands and thousands of years, people were riding around on uh, with horses or camels for thousands of years. And now you can go halfway across the globe in a day. A trip that used to take months. I mean months. Knowledge has increased. Ungodly knowledge has increased. But hopefully godly knowledge on the end times will increase. I don't know. Then I, Daniel, verse 5, Then I, Daniel, looked and behold, there stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river and the other on that side of the bank of the river, and one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? How long? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, a year, times, two years, and a half. And that's talking about the 42 months, the three and a half years of the tribulation period. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. And I heard, but understand not. Then said I, O Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel. Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the end of, uh, until the, I'm sorry. For the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white. Somebody tell the black Hebrews, they're going to be made white. I'm being extremely sarcastic there. Many shall be purified, made white, and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from that time shall that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up. The man of sin standing in the holy place, people, proclaiming that he is God. 
And from that time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. But go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. Now, remember something. The abomination of desolation also happened in 70 A.D. when uh, the uh, sacrifice was taken away. But you got to realize something. When Christ died on the cross, the sacrifices themselves became an abomination. So, one last Thing. How do we know, how are we going to know who is the real Messiah and the false Messiah? Paul, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are asleep, uh, alive, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Now it's talking about the resurrection. Those of us that are alive are not going to prevent those that are dead in Christ from being resurrected. That's basically my, that's the Bob translation. Verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, not a secret rapture, people, with the voice of the archangel, Michael, I guess, and with the Donald Trump of God. Uh, oh, oh, no, sorry. That's And with the trump of God. I don't think Donald's going to have anything to do with it. And with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. People, if we're not caught up together in the clouds, it's the wrong Messiah. And the way the people worship the tribe, uh, believe me, most especially when, when the, uh, the false prophet comes and starts doing all these miracles, bringing fire down from the sky that devours his enemies, you better believe people are going to be scared and they're going to follow the beast. They're going to take his mark and you're going to be hunted down. But I'm sure there'll be nation worldwide television network coverage when the man of sin, son of perdition, the beast, the Antichrist, walks into the temple, which I believe is they're going to rebuild, and proclaims that he is God. That's your cue. Disappear to the mountains. Because other than that, turn yourself in because you're going to get your head cut off. But you know what, people? That is a guaranteed ticket to the kingdom. Revelation 20 and verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years." There you go. That's that's it, people. All right, well, I think this is the end of the Abomination series. Uh, I hope you've learned something. I hope it prepares you for what is coming. Uh, my opinion is once the uh, United States declares war on Iran and destroys the last 
country, Islamic country that has any large military presence that would make problems for a rebuilding of the temple. Uh, I think after their war with Iran, I personally believe that the uh, economy will collapse. It'll be planned, trust me. Um, and then, I, if I was in charge of a plan to do all this, what I would do is I would get up on television and say, well, you know what? All these bad things are happening to us. The economy collapsed. All these bad things are happening to us because we have not worshipped the God of the Old Testament with a temple and doing sacrifices unto him, thus denying Christ as the Messiah or the ultimate sacrifice. And there's a temple in Brazil. I think they built it in four years. It's, from what I understand, it's almost an exact replica. Four years, people. They can build it in four years, start doing sacrifices, and um, then the man of sin will come. I, I just, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to live to see it, all this, but uh, some of you youngins probably will. You know, I'm in my 60s, and, uh, you know, <laughs> this might happen when I'm in my 70s if I live that long. I don't know. Maybe the 80s if I'd lived that long. But honestly, I think some of you young people will actually live to see all this. I don't know. But... Uh, it's all on God's timetable. But uh, when I was a child, the sodomites stayed in the closet. Abortion was illegal. We had prayer in Jesus' name and Bible readings in public school and elementary school. We sort of kind of honored the Lord. And uh, my how things have changed. So God's judgment is upon us. If we're not having drought, we're having floods, whirlwinds of judgment, hurricanes, tornadoes. You think God doesn't control the weather? You think man's responsible with harp? Eh, God might allow it to happen, but God's in ultimate control. Just remember that. All right, so... All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world, in Jesus' name, amen.